The Miami Marlins presently have the second worst attendance in MLB in 2024, next to the Oakland A's. And the A's have an excuse. The team's leaving. That would anger the fans in any city. Not to mention the rundown stadium, and the ownership's focus on losing as much as possible. But Miami is different. Lone Depot Park is only a dozen years old. It's pretty nice. The team isn't threatening to leave. Yeah, the team's pretty bad, and they've put some pretty bad products on the field in past years, too. But even when the team has been good, or at least shown some signs of hope, the performance on the field has not been matched by more seats filled in the bleachers. That's not to say a sellout crowd or near sellout crowd doesn't happen in Miami. We saw it repeatedly in last year's WBC, a few times back in February for the Caribbean Series, and opening day just a few weeks ago. Some say that baseball just doesn't work in Miami, but attendance figures for those times show that it does work there. What does not work is having one team, that's usually not very good, playing 81 home games every year. Miami is an event city, and an MLB franchise is not a good fit for an event city, because the average MLB game is not an event. You have to be a really big fan to think all 81 games are must-see events. The more casual fan will be interested in attending opening day, the all-star game, postseason games, but not the typical game in the middle of the summer. I made a video a couple years ago called 77 Cities That Can Host an MLB Game. I'll link that in the description if you haven't seen it yet. In that video, I argued that all 30 MLB teams, even those that have no problem selling out their home ballparks, should schedule a few games in their AAA cities and other smaller cities to help spread their brand around. The smaller cities often feel really disconnected from Major League Baseball, and you find the most loyal fans in the home cities of Major League teams. The idea comes from Japan, where all 12 NPB teams play several home games away from home. No matter what part of the country you live in, you can easily attend an NPB game every summer. Helps explain why baseball is a national game in Japan, whereas MLB is more of a regional thing in the U.S. Today I just want to talk about one team, the Miami Marlins. And Miami is different from most other major league cities. It's not a case of the fan base being restricted to the city, but rather the fan base being so small, in the city and out of it. So instead of trying to push it on to Miami residents, hoping they'll fill the stands 81 times a year, why not spread it around a bit? Become the Caribbean Marlins. I'm not really suggesting a name change, Miami would still be their home city. But think about it, baseball is bigger in the Caribbean region than it is in any other part of the world. Yet the city in the center of it all has a professional team playing in a mostly empty ballpark. And yeah, there are reasons why the Caribbean isn't full of major league franchises. One reason is politics. Countries like Cuba, Venezuela, and I'd add Nicaragua to that list now. Because of their sour relationship with the U.S., I wouldn't recommend the Marlins try to hold regular season games there. Which is too bad because baseball is huge in those three countries. Other reasons are population and incomes. The countries just don't have enough people. Or the people don't have enough money to support a major league franchise throughout an entire season. And the stadiums are smaller there. They can't get anything close to the 30,000 plus that most teams expect for opening day and postseason games. But in places like the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico, local fans could fill the stands much better than they could in Miami for a typical regular season game. It would actually raise the Marlins' average attendance. And by playing more than one series a year in each of those places, they could develop a sense of loyalty to the Marlins' brand throughout the region. They could even take up the city's name for the occasion. San Juan Marlins one month, Panama Marlins the next. Maybe have special uniforms made with the colors of the country's flag. As for the games in Miami, those fans who attend one or two games a year will still attend one or two games a year. The difference is it'd be one game out of 50 instead of one out of 81, raising the average attendance. That's what I'm suggesting here, 31 home games in other parts of the region. They build the Marlins brand in several different countries, sell more tickets, and make more money. Here's how I would do it. For the first few series of the season, they'd play in Miami. Of course you want opening day there. April in Miami, after opening day, is usually atrocious. But this would still be Miami's team. Wouldn't be right to disappear right after the season opener. Besides, fans might be more likely to show up for those first few home series if they know the team's not going to be there so often in the coming months. The first home series outside of Miami would be right there in the state of Florida. 121 Financial Ballpark, home to the Marlins AAA affiliate, the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. The ballpark has a capacity of 11,000. Not much, but it still beats the typical weekday attendance at Lone Depot. Hold a three-game series in Jacksonville, Tuesday to Thursday. Just make sure the opposing team isn't the Braves. You want to try to have the crowd rooting for the Marlins, not the other team. 
The next two home series would be played back to back, Tuesday to Thursday in San Juan, Puerto Rico. On the weekend, they head to the Dominican Republic for a three game set in Santo Domingo. In San Juan, they'd play at Iran Batorn Stadium. With a capacity of 18,000, three sellout crowds would easily top the average attendance in Miami. And Puerto Rican fans have proven that they can fill the stands for MLB games in the recent past. In Santo Domingo, the venue would be Estadio Quisquea, where the Rays and Red Sox played a spring training series back in March. The Dominican Republic has never hosted a regular season MLB series. No doubt all 14,400 seats would be full for this series. That would be the end of the first part of the home away from home schedule. At this point, the team returns to Miami for a few home series, and local fans might miss the team and show up in larger numbers than they usually do in late spring and early summer. The second part begins with the Marlins going to the Bahamas, playing at Andre Rogers National Baseball Stadium, which just opened two years ago. For this one, they would take a hit in attendance, since it only seats 5,500. But the attention they get from the 400,000 local residents would be worth it. They could make so many new Marlins fans by doing this, especially right now with Bahami and Jazz Chisholm in their lineup. The series would be huge with local residents. Because of the small size of the ballpark and the small population of the country, they probably limit this to a two-game series. Next, a return to Santo Domingo and San Juan, this time with the Dominican series during the week and the Puerto Rican series on the weekend. You might think about holding these in different ballparks on different parts of the island. There would certainly be calls to do so, but I think it's more important to use the same venues with consistency. Give the players and the fans a sense of familiarity. Besides, if I'm not mistaken, I think Iran Batorn Stadium and Quisquea Stadium are the only ones up to Major League standards. Why go back to Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico a second time? First of all, they're the ones best able to raise attendance figures. They can sell out for more than just one series. Second, the Marlins would be aiming to become a home team on these islands. Cardinals and Cubs played a two-game series in London last year. It didn't convert the locals into Cubs and Cards fans. It takes some consistency, more than one series a year, to build a fan base. But the third phase of the plan would skip the two islands. This one would take us to the South American continent. Estadio Edgar Renteria in Barranquilla, Colombia. A 12,000 seat ballpark just opened six years ago, up to Major League standards, might be used for next year's WBC qualifier, and it would be great if Edgar Renteria himself showed up, the guy who helped the Marlins win their first World Series title in 1997, the greatest Colombian baseball player of all time. The series would be a huge event in the northern coastal part of the country, where baseball is big, and would hopefully attract national attention from the lower part of the country, where baseball is hardly known. Right after that, the Marlins head next door to Panama to play at the 20,000-seat Rod Carew Stadium. This has been used for MLB exhibition games and WBC qualifiers in the recent past, so we know it'll work for a Major League Series. There have been some issues with attendance, though. Maybe because it's a regular season MLB Series, the locals could fill the park day after day. But at first, the Marlins would want this to be just a two-game series. The final phase would bring the Marlins back to San Juan and Santo Domingo for one last pair of series there. For the final home away from home series, they'd play in New Orleans. Not sure if it's still compatible for baseball, but Goldmine on Airline Stadium was home to the New Orleans Baby Cakes when they were the Marlins AAA affiliate up until 2019. It had a capacity of 10,000, but has since been converted into a multi-purpose stadium. New Orleans is not a candidate for an expansion team. We won't see a major league team moving there but I'm sure the city would love to hold a three-game MLB series toward the end of the season. If that ballpark no longer works, maybe there's another place they could use. Or they could build something. Doesn't have to be too big. And that would be it. Then they return to Miami for the last few series. Very important that they finish in the home city, especially if they're in a pennant race. Total would be 31 games in other places, leaving 50 games in Miami. Other ideas, Pensacola, where the Marlins AA team plays. The Virgin Islands, baseball's pretty big there, but both of those have small venues and small populations. Orlando would be great, especially since they probably won't get an expansion team like they've been hoping for, but they wouldn't have a place for them to play at this time. One place you'll notice I left out here is Mexico. I don't think the Marlins would have much luck trying to win over fans there. You have a better chance trying to promote a Texas or a California team there. Besides, Mexico's got its own baseball in the summer, the LMB, which turns 100 next year. Have some respect for the local league. The other countries I've mentioned here have winter leagues with their own rivalries and traditions, but not a lot going on in the summer. Anyway, that's how I would do it. Let me know what you think down in the comments. That's all for this one, and until next time, this is Baseball International. See ya!